If you would, bow your heads. Dear God, we come to you now, and we just ask that you speak to us directly, dear Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to kick off a new sermon series about making 2023 a year of healing. And we're going to look at some healings of Jesus in the Bible and make them applicable to us in the year 2023. And I, I just will ask this. You think, you think we need some healing right now? Hmm. Today I'm going to be in Luke chapter 5. We're going to, he has just called some of his disciples to come and follow him. And we're going to be dealing with a man with leprosy. And uh, I don't know how much you know about leprosy. Um, it's an infectious disease that damages the skin and nerves. And they get to the nerves so bad that people hurt themselves and they injure themselves and they get infections and stuff, and it can, it can cause people to lose limbs and, and appendages and stuff. That's kind of where that idea comes from, all right? And um, it uh, is not highly contagious, something I had never really known. Um, the attitudes is that it's very contagious, and um, it's spread like through a cough or through fluid contact out of the nose and stuff, kind of like the flu. But um, people live with individuals who have leprosy for lots of years and never, never get it. And, um, the, but the ideas that people had in, the, in biblical times when Jesus was walking on the earth were totally different. Okay, and um, they didn't have a lot of details, of course. You know, they didn't have a, a lot of... Uh, Medical clinics, there wasn't a lot of trials being going on back then for new medicines and stuff. And there was a perception that people who had leprosy were either unclean and or impure in their life. And that thought really was um, taken in, in to the new church for, for years and years and years. That idea um, continued to, uh, to be um, pro- um, thought of. So... The viewpoint when we're talking about here is that the people walking around were with leprosy were being, they were being punished by God for something they either were habitually doing or something they had done a long time ago. And then this, because of of this idea, because they were unclean according to the law and because of the idea that the disease was highly contagious, they were shunned, they were ignored, they were forced to uh, wear bells on their clothing. a lot of times, and, and I guess it was by different laws locally, a lot of times they held a, like the clapper, a piece of wood that would go back and forth, and they had to hit that, and where, whatever sound they made in your area, man, when you heard that, it, it caught your attention, because it was like, woof, somebody with leprosy is around. And uh, usually they had to stay six feet away from everybody. <laughs> and I read that if it was a really, really windy day, that increased up to 150 feet. So depend on the weather, how close you can get someone. And if you accidentally were getting ready to bump into them, it was on their, it was on them to let you know that you were getting ready to touch someone unclean, okay? And um, boy, it was just a miserable life. And they ended up being, you know, pushed all out and live. And that's where the leper colony thing comes from. And this is just a, you know, a lot going on. And, you know, you're, you can make the translations about how, how we do people nowadays and um, sometimes if you you know mess up a certain degree or a certain way or to a certain person or family or whatever boy it's like you almost contract leprosy and um, there's no way you can get clean and the idea that um, you know someone could come back from that is just it's not even in our thinking and um, we we get it in our minds where it's better that we just shun them ignore them push them off and it's just not it's just not biblical. And this is a scenario, or this is a situation where Jesus Christ is confronted with someone with leprosy. And, um, you know, he's got he's to put his money where his mouth is, as we say nowadays. So here it is, Luke 5, chapter, or verse 12. It says, And it happened when he was in a certain city that, behold, a man who was full of leprosy. So this is someone who's obviously, you know, in the, in the later stages of it. And, and they're, when you look at them, you don't have to hear the bell 
or the clapper or anything, you know this guy is suffering with leprosy. And it said that uh, he was full of leprosy, and he uh, fell on his face, and he implored at Jesus, he's begging at Jesus, Lord, and I want you to think about and listen to the words that he's saying here, okay? Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. So there's a man with great faith, and he knows that Jesus Christ can make him clean. And it's all about whether or not Jesus is willing. And it says that after, then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. So here is Jesus Christ who can perform any kind of miracle just with a blink of an eye, a thought. But he actually reaches out and does something that he's not supposed to do. And something that is breaking barriers, barriers of all kinds of lines. And, you know, when you, when you read the woman at the well, there's all kinds of lines of racism being crossed and discrimination. And these guys were discriminated. They were persecuted, these people with, with leprosy. And Jesus Christ crosses all of that with a simple touch. And he reaches over and touches him and says, I, he says, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. Now, what stage did it leave? Holy. He is made whole. Okay? And let's just connect that to the story because it's my job every time I stand in front of you to preach the message of Jesus Christ. And we as sinners, we're doomed to hell unless we have been touched by Jesus Christ and we've been saved. So if you've never had the touch of Jesus Christ, don't leave here today without it. Come and be saved. Let the leprosy leave you. And it said he charged to him to tell no one, but go directly and go and show yourself to the priests and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them to know that Jesus can save. And just as Moses commanded you do, go get cleansed so that you can be back in your life. You can be a walking witness of Jesus Christ. All right? And then that's how we are. I mean, you see people who, um, you know, have messed up in their lives, and, and Jesus Christ comes in and makes them whole, and then they turn into a whole different person. And that, is, and, you know, same personality and stuff and all the great traits and everything, but it's like their, the inner soul of them is changing. It is because it is that Jesus Christ changed them. And so, real quickly, let's just kind of make this applicable, and let's, let's take some of these big themes, and let's just reiterate them here real quickly, okay? This man knew the enormity of his condition. He could have come up, he could have said, you know, touched him, or, but he fell at his feet, and he says, you know, hey, I have this horrible disease, if you're willing, you can cleanse me of this disease. So he knew the enormity of his condition. He had lived it. I mean, the Bible says that he's full of leprosy. So he knew what kind of life he was living. He knew the enormity. He knew what he was asking Jesus Christ to do, the enormity of the ask. And, it's, and he had been told by all the experts that his life was hopeless. Your life, once you got this disease, your life is hopeless. Go live away. Don't touch us. You're unclean. You are permanently unclean. In fact, in the, in the medieval churches, they had what were called leper slots. Slots in the church wall, guess what that was for? So they could look in, because they weren't allowed to come into the church. Isn't that a terrible thought? That was reality for these people. And so they've been told that they are hopeless. And let me just say here this morning that sometimes we can get to where we feel hopeless. And it's not because of your leprosy, but because of the things going on. And you know what? Sometimes when we mess up, we compound it with our thinking. And it just won't leave our brains. And we reiterate the, the process. We go over it all the time. We keep thinking about, what did I do? If I could have done this, if I would have done that, oh, if I could just take it back. And we go through, and the next thing you know, you're driving yourself mad. And then you are hopeless. Anybody, don't raise your hand. Anybody been there? Huh? It's... Terrible place to be. So if you've got an overthinking kind of mind, man, I mean, you know what we're talking about here. And people sometimes get to where they feel hopeless. All right? And this guy, he didn't have anybody who could even take him to find Jesus. You know, he, he had to track him down, you know. I don't know if this guy's had something removed or if he's hurt. 
if he's got sores, if he's got infections in his body, don't know if there's swelling, if there, you don't know if there's pain, but he had to go out on his own, all right, to find him. No one there to help with a hopeless feeling. Being told by everybody who was an expert, your life is over. With no guarantee. There's no guarantee he's going to find Jesus. Jesus may move on to the next city before he gets to him. There's no guarantee here that he'll find him. There's no guarantee that he'll heal him. No guarantee that he can even get to him. The crowd might be too thick. They won't let him through. And he didn't know if Jesus would even heal him. I mean, this guy's... You know, he's in, he's in a situation, and it says that he knew his place in his appearance, what that would mean to the crowd. He knew his place in society it had been reiterated to him. This guy knows who he is. He knows what he has. He knows that he's seeking Jesus Christ, and that is where he is. He is hopeless. He has been told by the experts, but he's got great faith that Jesus can save him. And Jesus is willing, and with one touch... Jesus cleansing. And I want you to think about this. And I want you to say these things to yourself here this morning. With whatever you're dealing with. This guy was dealing with leprosy. You may be dealing with depression. You may be dealing with a loss. You may be dealing with loneliness. You may be dealing with regret. You may be dealing with something that happened this week that you wish you could take back. It may be something you did 20 years ago. It may be something somebody's holding over you. It may be that you're holding something over somebody. Okay? Because sometimes, you know, we're the ones in the crowd screaming at the leper, go back to the colony, okay? Sometimes we're in the wrong. But I want you to say these things to yourself. Let this minister to you, because this isn't me. These are the actions and the responses and attitudes of Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus knew the enormity of his power. Jesus is the most powerful force ever, period. Take sins away, make all things new. He's going to come back and restore heaven and earth, into one new Jerusalem where we all go live forever and ever. He'll wipe away our sins, wipe away our tears forever. He is all-powerful. Jesus knows all. He is the expert of all experts, the king of all kings, the prince of all princes. He is the sacrifice that is once and for all final. He is everything. Jesus calls us to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. We may have to minister to someone who has leprosy. Okay? We sometimes put up barriers on what we're willing to do. That's fine. I understand it. I get it. I'm asking you to let these words speak to you. Let these words minister to you. What is being said to you this morning? Okay? Jesus touched him. Wasn't supposed to do that, but Jesus touched him and healed him. We're asked to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, to make the impression that Jesus Christ is here and living through us. They can experience Jesus Christ through us, but we have to be willing hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Jesus is always there, and he will always meet us. He, this guy, did not have to worry about it meeting Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is always there. We never have to worry where Jesus is. He's always with us. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. If you feel hopeless this morning, don't, because Jesus Christ is sitting in the chair next to you right now. He's there waiting to love on you, give you the compassion and grace that you can't find anywhere else, give you the peace that only can come from him. Jesus is always with us. And he guarantees healing and cleansing. Every, listen to this, not one, not ten, not a thousand, not a million, but every name that has ever cried out to Jesus Christ has received salvation. They will go to heaven. Amen? Man, every person that ever cried out to the name of Jesus Christ, gets saved, gets cleansed, gets healed, made new. And he puts us back into our righteous place. We don't have to go out to the colony anymore. We don't have to rattle. We don't have to. He puts us back in our righteous place where we can have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, with God. Sin is no longer the separator. Thank you for tuning in to Star Church's Sermon. 
We truly hope that the sermon edified you today and brought you closer to the Lord. For more information about Star Church, visit our website at stargbchurch.com. Once again, that's stargbchurch.com. If you would like to visit our church, our address is 4925 State Road 142, El Dorado, Illinois 62930. We now pray that God will bless you as you enter the mission field and bring his word to the world. And as always, we will see you next time here at Star Church. Thank you.